All right, guys, so let's talk about facet joints here. Okay, so obviously what we're gonna have is we're gonna have facet joints oriented in different planes based on where we are in the spine. So for a cervical spine facet joint, we're gonna be 45 degrees, okay? And for a thoracic spine facet joint, we're gonna be more oriented in the frontal plane. This is exactly what I want you to do. I want you to practice it in this fashion. If I'm a lumbar spine facet joint, I'm going to be more oriented in the sagittal plane. So what I'm going to ask Lauren and Hannah to do here is they're going to stand in line very close to one another. Okay, so they're going to be oriented this direction. Okay, the direction to be here. What they're both going to do is they're both going to pretend to be cervical spine facet joints. Okay, so good. So look what we have here. We have a 45 degree plane of movement. Now, if they both move forward, look what happens. If the set joints slide forward. If they both move backwards, aka extension, the set joints slide backwards. If they both move to the left, what happens? The set joints go inferior on the ipsilateral side, superior on the contralateral side. If they rotate, same thing happens. Now, if, and this is where opening patterns or opening restrictions and closing patterns or closing restrictions come in. If Hannah moves into right side bending, left, but that'll work. <laughs> it's okay. Okay, so she's performing left side bending. Look what happens here. The gap between the set joints closes on the ipsilateral side. However, it opens on the contralateral side. Very good. So now they're going to pretend to be thoracic facets. They're going to go in the frontal plate. Now look what happens here. If they both side bend, not a big deal, right? There's a lot of motion there. Now the only thing that's going to really preclude our thoracic spine from a lot of motion is going to be the ribs. If they rotate, look what happens here. Okay. They're going to bump into each other a little more, but still we're going to have quite a bit of rotation. If Hannah moves backwards and Lauren stays where she is, we have more space between the set joints. If they are lumbar set joints, they're going to orient themselves more into the sagittal plane. Now look what happens here, right? We already have seen cervical spine, thoracic spine, now lumbar spine. We're oriented much more in the sagittal plane, which means that flexion and extension is going to happen much more. We're going to have much more range of motion in flexion and extension. So if they both move forward, they can freely move forward. They can freely move backwards. Now, if they try to rotate, what happens? Lauren gets knocked in the head. Why? Because the set joint of one vertebrae is hitting the set joint of the other vertebrae. Not nearly as much motion until we make contact. Same thing with side bending. So there's rotation on the other side. Side bending, okay, same thing. Again, if Lauren moves forward and Hannah stays, there's an increase in the gap, an increase in the opening between the facet joints. If my patient is having pain with an increase in the gap, I have an opening restriction or opening pattern. If, however, Lauren moves backwards into extension. Now look what happens. The gap decreases. This is a closing pattern or closing restriction. If my patient has more pain when the facet joint is closed, then that is a closing restriction or closing pattern. Now look what happens. Now I want Lauren to extend, side bend, and rotate. Maximum closing here, right? There's a lot of touching. Okay, so what happens here, the facet joint on one side is maximally closed, not maximally closed on the other side. Okay, very good.